They call it the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED, but I call it the laptop I've always wanted as a creative professional. It comes with the Asus Dial, which is one of my favorite productivity boosters that I've seen of the past two years. It comes with a vibration click glass trackpad. The keyboard actually rises up off of the deck of the laptop and it's an OLED screen. So your darks are darker, your contrast is stronger and your colors are more vibrant. Not to mention that it has an i7-12700H, which is my favorite processor as far as performance is concerned for creative professionals and an RTX 3060, which to me is the best base level for a GPU. As far as video editing is concerned and Photoshop and After Effects, a 3060 is a great starting point. If you're getting into 3D modeling, I would recommend having something with a little bit more performance like a 3070 or a 3080, but the 3060 is fantastic for creative professionals, especially if you're using 6K B-RAW footage or below, you're gonna have no problems with the spec out of this laptop. Now it does come with 16 gigs of RAM and that is not upgradable. That's probably the one thing that I would say, eh, I wish they didn't bottleneck it, was the 16 gig unupgradable situation. I think this laptop should be upgradable. That would have made this the absolutely most perfect laptop. And while we're on something that I really don't like too much, let's talk about the battery life. And then we'll get more into some things that I love about this laptop because I really think it is the best laptop for creators going right now. The battery life was subpar to say the least. And like I said earlier, I like Intel processors for the performance, not for the battery life or efficiency by any stretch of the imagination. Now the battery life for this laptop, the most you're gonna get is doing productivity tasks like running, writing Google Docs, taking video calls, and you're gonna see about five hours and 44 minutes out of this battery. Now, streaming video on say YouTube or Netflix is gonna get you about four hours and 30 minutes. Using Photoshop, I test this using the Photoshop Puget Systems benchmark on repeat till the battery goes dead. That's about two hours and 40 minutes. And then for Premiere Pro, I run a 4K project on loop until the battery goes dead, and that's about two hours and 17 minutes. And that's all at about 30% screen brightness. Now, the screen does have a brightness of 348 nits at full brightness, and the color gamut range is phenomenal on this laptop at 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 1.24. Like I said, this laptop has everything going for it minus the battery life. If you look inside the My Asus Command Center, you have access to whisper mode, standard mode, and full performance mode, so you can work in the environment you want to. However, when we're on whisper mode, I did not see the battery performance that I had hoped. That's the only reason I think this laptop may have been slightly better for creators with the Ryzen 9 6900 HS processor, is because those processors are more efficient on your battery. I mean, this is a 96 watt hour battery. I was really hoping to see better performance out of it. Now, one thing I think is kind of weird and quirky is you have these very large speaker grills, except you see the dark spots here? That's the only place that the speaker is actually coming through. If I look, took a look underneath and shined a flashlight under there and like, kind of squinted to see exactly what was under there. And it looks like the speakers are sitting on top of the keyboard deck. So right there, there's those holes to allow it to push through. But the good thing is the speaker noise will actually escape slightly out of the sides here to give you a more immersive audio experience. And I'm gonna give you a quick sample of that so you can hear what it sounds like for yourself. Now the keyboard deck is fantastic. I love the feel of the keyboard deck. I love how it's slightly tilted towards me. As you can see, when I pull it up on its side there, it lifts off of the keyboard deck ever so slightly, pulling it up and giving you a really nice ergonomic feel for your hands. I like the medium key press keys. They have a very nice backlight. It's bright. It pushes through very well. And then you have a few extra keys here on the right side. You have a home button, page up, page down, uh, an end key, and then you have your full size shift key, which I'm super happy about. They did not take the arrow keys and make that shift key a two thirds shift key. Super happy about that decision. I think they did a great job with that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the glass trackpad is phenomenal. It's a vibration click trackpad. So it's not actually physically clicking the trackpad. It just sends a vibration through your finger to make you feel like you're clicking, which means you can click anywhere on the trackpad and it will be a solid firm click. Now it does have a little bit of give, so it actually feels like it's clicking because of that slight give in the trackpad. So it's not like it's very, very stiff. So it gives a little bit, like there's a little flex in the trackpad and it gives that vibration. So it's a very satisfying click. You can also turn on a calculator by just going ahead and rolling your finger for one second along that calculator button. You can go ahead and type in your calculator 
functions, and you're good to go there. I really like that because it eliminates the need for the large numpad on your keyboard, but you still get it on your trackpad. Now the dial is something that I am a huge fan of. This is a revised dial. They used to have it either a full physical dial or you could go ahead and turn on the dial on your trackpad with previous ZenBook models. Now they've gone ahead and kind of combined the Studio Book Pro 16 OLED and the ZenBook into one, and we now have this. This is also that glass touch material, and then you actually have a center click button. That button actually does physically click, unlike the trackpad, which is a glass, and it's a vibration click. I think the longevity of the dial is gonna be slightly better over maybe the physical dial. Maybe that physical dial could wear out over time, where this, it literally is just the trackpad material and then the center click button. So longevity's sake, this is a great setup. And that's why I really think that this is gonna really compete for my personal pick over the StudioBook Pro 16 OLED. I think they're two fantastic models. They both have a lot going for them, but I love just the little neat features that this one has over the StudioBook OLED. But I've been trying to get one in the studio, so I hope to review the latest 2022 model head to head with this model, but just fingers crossed, maybe drop a bunch of comments below and say, yeah, we want Ben to get the studio book, and then maybe I can send that over to Asus and they could be like, okay, all his fans really want it, so we're gonna send him one so he could do the head to head review. So if you guys could comment below, that would be awesome. For how many features this laptop packs, it does come in a fairly thin and light package. It is not super light. This isn't an ultra book, but as you can see the weight and thickness coming up on the screen, it is no heavier than your average gaming laptop, except it's packed with creator functionality rather than a gaming laptop that you buy for the performance and you kind of accept the gamer features on that laptop. Personally, I don't game, so this would be the perfect laptop for me as far as my needs in the past of buying a gaming laptop. I did not have this option, but now that it's here, I'm, I'm very stoked about it. Now, before we move on, I was talking about the keyboard and I forgot to give you an audio sample of the keyboard and trackpad in use. So here's a quick audio sample for you. And again, I forgot, but we're gonna give it to you now, the sample of the webcam so you can see what that looks like in use. This is the webcam on the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED and a little sample of the audio for you. Really nice looking webcam, clear. It is a 720p, but it does have a clean image coming out of it. Also really neat, this uh, symbol lights up. I kinda like that, it's a nice little touch. So that has a nice backlighting on it. Now let's go ahead and check out the ports. On the left side panel, you have all of the ports that you need. You have your power adapter, USB type A, and two USB type C's. Now, no creator laptop would be complete without the coveted SD card slot, which this laptop does have, a headphone jack, and an HDMI port. So I love the connectivity of this laptop. It doesn't have any extra ports that I don't need. It has all the ports that I do need. It makes me very happy to see that on this laptop. Now, before we jump into the performance benchmarks, let's take a look at the thermals. And this is a reason that I'm very happy that they chose Intel. The thermals in this laptop are fantastic. If you look at both the Photoshop thermals and the video editing thermals, you can see that we don't get above 80 degrees Celsius on any of the thermals. And your average thermal temperature is in the 70s and below. With Photoshop on battery mode seen as low as 52 degrees Celsius, on the thermals. And so I just think it is fantastic to see such a cool and quiet, the highest fan noise I saw in Photoshop was 48 decibels. And the average fan noise was around the 40 decibel range with on battery mode actually being at zero decibels. So this thing has great thermals as well as great fan noise. Now we did see up to 52 decibels during the 4K export while on performance mode for video editing but that to me is to be expected. That's way better than some of the 55 and 60 decibel fan noises that I've seen on some of the popular gaming laptops. Without further ado, let's get into the performance results. And we're gonna start out in Geekbench single core and multi-core. In Geekbench single core, it hit the mid range of the charts that I have here, great performance. But actually what surprised me is in multi-core, it topped the charts 
on the selections that I have here above an i9 processor in the popular Asus Zephyrus M16. And that's why I said earlier in the video, I would have preferred them to give us an option to go ahead and upgrade to maybe an RTX 3070, rather than giving us an i9 versus an i7 and only keeping the RTX 3060. I think that 3070 would have been a big benefit. And I'll tell you why as we get into 3D modeling. Now, as we head into Cinebench R20, again, a nice mid-range chart landing, and then Cinebench R23, single core and multi-core, we saw a good mid-range on the charts as well. So this thing has great performance. Oftentimes what happens is brands make creator-focused laptops, but for some reason they underperform. They might prioritize cool thermals or quiet fan noise, and it just it just ruins the performance. And so I'm super happy to see that they did not thermal throttle this system, and they allowed it to go at full performance, just like its brother gaming laptops that it is bringing the power of, but also bringing the assets and the features for creators. Now, heading into the Blender Classroom benchmark, this is where I wish we would have seen the option for an RTX 3070. As you see, this laptop is sitting at the bottom of the chart in Blender, and there are some other RTX 3060 laptops higher up on the chart. But for whatever reason, that RTX 3060 in this laptop did not pull off the performance that I was hoping for, which is why I wish it would have come with the RTX 3070. So either they need to fine tune the 3060 in this laptop or give us the option to upgrade to a 3070 in the future to get full performance in some very graphical heavy softwares. Now, as I'm looking at Autodesk 3DS Max, you can see that again, it's sitting near the bottom of the chart. It's not a bad score. A 170 is actually pretty on par for some of the top scores, only about 40 points behind the M16, but still 40 points is performance that you could be having if you had the option for that RTX 3070. And looking at Autodesk Maya, still a great score at 225, just more near the bottom end of the most recent benchmarks I've been running on my channel. Moving on to PTC Creo and SolidWorks, again, about the same position on both of those tests. So this laptop could be good for 3D modeling, but I would not consider it to be a great 3D modeling laptop. If that's gonna be your main use case, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this laptop flat out. I just don't think it has the performance to be the top tier 3D modeling laptop, though I do feel it does have good performance in 3D modeling. Taking a look at Photoshop, this laptop has all that it needs to be a great Photoshop laptop, well above the 800 benchmark. I say anything above 700 is completely fantastic for Photoshop. 800s and above, you've got nothing to worry about. And if you're ever up in the thousands, well, you just now have bragging rights that your laptop officially got over a thousand in the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark, because truly I think that 800 range is absolutely fantastic. And all you would really need to have a powerful Photoshop laptop. Now looking at After Effects, this laptop scores a 743, which is good. It's a very good score. Anything above 700 to me is great. But again, with that RTX 3070, I think we would have been up in the mid 800s, maybe even low 900s. And that would have just given you a smoother workflow inside of After Effects. This thing will still do well. Um, just do note that it might be a little bit behind some of those RTX 3070 equipped laptops. Now, up until this point, you may think I'm kind of talking this laptop down in regards to 3D modeling, Blender, and After Effects. And the main reason I'm doing that is because I don't want you to think I'm fanboying over this laptop because I really do like it. I think it has all the performance you need as a creator. It may not have all the performance you want in regards to the 3D work, the motion graphics, and Blender, but in regards to Photoshop, in regards to graphic design, photography, and digital art, as well as video editing, you know, you saw the scores in Photoshop. Now we're gonna get into some of the video editing benchmarks. So you're gonna see that this laptop has what it takes. Now looking at the Premiere Pro drop frame test, you can see that we have a zero drop frames for 4K playback. And then in 6K B-RAW, we only have 465 drop frames. That's fantastic. And then in red footage, we have 567. So this laptop has what it takes. It really has no need for the RTX 3070 in this instance. The RTX 3060 is great. That's why I'm saying the 3070 is more of that 3D modeling, motion design, and blender situation, the graphical processing. It handles video editing footage very well. Now, looking at the export time from 6K B-RAW, you can see that it sits more the mid to lower end of this chart. The export time wasn't the most impressive. I must admit, I was more impressed with the playback for 6K B-RAW than I was the export time, but this still is not a bad export time by any stretch of the imagination. It just doesn't sit in that 15, 14, or 13 minute spot. It's gonna be a little slower on the export. However, I will say for DaVinci Resolve, it did surprise me and gave us a six minute and 13 second export time out of DaVinci Resolve, a very respectable export time. So for DaVinci Resolve user, this thing fits right in the average spot 
of the other powerful creator laptops that I recommend for video editing inside of DaVinci Resolve. Punch for punch, this laptop is a fantastic buy. I think right now, as it sits in the market, the i7-12700H and RTX 3060 equipped model with 16 gigs of RAM is the sweet spot for this laptop. They do have an i9 available. I think that would give you a tiny bump in performance, but honestly, for around $2,600 for the i7, give or take, you can check the live pricing in the links below if you're curious about the exact live pricing. And then about $2,900 for the i9. I think the i7 is just a better deal personally. The features that I really think make this laptop stand out is the 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen, the slightly slanted keyboard, the dial, the glass trackpad, and of course, great performance. I was very impressed. One area that I was slightly disappointed would definitely have been the battery life. I thought, why can we not get just a little bit more battery life? I mean, we have a 96 watt hour battery and it just really did not show off in that instance. Another favorite of mine, of course, is the SD card slot. I was so happy to see that included on this laptop. And of course, the cool thermals and quiet fan noise that this laptop was able to produce. So punch for punch, man, I'm trying not to fanboy, trying to be super just level on the playing field here, but this is the creator laptop I've been wanting for the past couple of years. And I must say, Asus definitely delivered. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase, likes this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't wanna miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.